It's okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's we've working. got Joy Masher in the house. We're here, right? Yep. Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, so we've got a special treat for you today. I'm going to be your host with Leviathan Network. My name is Andrew Whipple, and I am here with one of the utmost important developers with Joy Masher. Didio, hey! Hey, man. How, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you already know. Enough about me, though. This is all about you guys. First off, congratulations on fully funding more funding than you actually realized, right? On Odalis, the Dark Call. Oh, thank you, man. Um, the, in, that was Thais. Uh, Thais, who made the entire campaign, He, she was great. Well, there's going to be a lot of showcasing this game today. Some questions from, of course, any of you guys who are checking it out right now. You can ask either myself. Well, I don't know why you'd ask me anything, but Danio, of course, will answer anything that you guys want to point at. And hey, we're here just to celebrate the game and what we're going to be seeing here in the very near future. Huh? All right. So, okay. why don't we kick this off? By what the heck? Why did you guys decide to make an 8 bit huh? game like this? Well, um, we love 8 bit, 8 -bit games, and Only Ken was an 8 bit game, so we've tried to expand things a little and maintain the, the, the main visual. Like, um, okay, it will be 8 bit again, but we will try to improve some things and make, make it bigger, make it, make it better. So, Odalus has. Uh, it was the birth of Odalus. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that strikes as being extremely important to this campaign when I was reading through everything, mm -hmm. you really wanted to pay homage to old school Nintendo graphics, 8-bit, and with all of the indie studios making the, this kind of material, they always try to go above and beyond. And they don't make true 8-bit graphics. This was pretty important to you guys, right? Yeah, um, we always wanted to try to, to stick with the, the the feel of the old 8-bit games. Like, um, we will try to use the same color scheme as the NES and the almost the same limitations. Uh, I, when I saw say it almost, it's because the resolution, as you can see, that it's widescreen and there are more uh, on-screen area. But uh, we try to stick with the basic of 8-bit graphics. I also just want to say that you're. <laughs> Who did the sound for this game? Oh, uh, the sound, uh, the music. It was my friend uh, Thiago from Any Freak. Uh, he created all the music of uh, Odalus using cool ship, uh, ship tunes and stuff. But the sound it was made by me in a, in a cool software. It's a free software called SFXR. It's a free so software. You can make uh, almost every sound in there. Really? Yeah, it's a uh, it, and it's free. <laughs> it's, wow. It's good. Uh huh. A lot of indies use that software, and some things where, like Haggis, the the main character, when he screams, it was a friend of mine who actually made his voice. <laughs> uh, his. Uh, so we recorded his scream, his screaming, and we put in a software that um, em emulates the sound chip of NES. So there is this noise when he screams. It's almost like an 8-bit voice, like in Ninja Gaiden 3. Oh god, Ninja Gaiden 3. Don't start me yes. on that. I'm a huge <laughs> Ninja Gaiden fan. I, I love the first one. The Dark Sword of Chaos, the second one's my favorite. He's but, my favorite too. Yeah, the, the third one I was not so impressed with. Mainly because if you yeah. ran out of continues, if you ran out of continues, you had to start the entire game over. Yeah, uh, I recommend that you play the Japanese version because there is password and infinite continues. So, <laughs> 
it was more playable. Yeah, well, I, I believe that. <laughs> I remember getting the last boss and just getting smoked. Going, all right, I'll just, I'll go through the level again, whatever. Nope, okay. you're gonna go through the game again. All the way uh, to the beginning. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, it's interesting you bring up Ninja Gaiden because, well, I think this is the only other 8-bit game that I've played where you have like some some sort of climbing mechanic. Because <laughs> remember in Ninja Gaiden <laughs> 2, you were able to move up and down the walls whenever you'd like. Yeah. And in, in this game, you can actually climb as well. Yeah, um, uh, there was something that I really missed in Oniken. Uh, it's the wall climbing. Because a lot of people was talking something like, oh, he's a ninja, but he can't climb the walls. Oh, he can't climb the walls. Oh, everyone was always repeating <laughs> that. <laughs> okay, the next game will have a wall climbing technique or something like that. So it was one of the first things that I put it in your doubts. It was, okay, you will climb walls. That's great to hear because that, that essentially means that you listen to your fans. You, you get established feedback. You take things into account and you realize what you can do. Uh, what else yeah. has the community suggested to you that's made its way into this game? Um, lots of people didn't... Um, uh, how can I say that? They had a hard time trying to play Onikin because uh, it, it didn't have any type of um, custom, uh, custom control scheme. Like, uh, I, I want to play using uh, any other button to to jump or attack so that was really difficult to put in Oniken so Odalus we have a, a custom control control configuration so you can use whatever you want to, to do whatever you want it's, it's funny too because that's a critique especially one for me for the modern generation I don't know why but for some reason, consoles, just any kind of console developer just doesn't allow you to do custom controls and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, uh, there, there are games that came to Windows, for instance, that was on console, like, um, I can't quite remember now, but they don't have any kind of custom, custom control or something like that. It's pretty annoying. I remember when Dark Souls finally got ported over. It had you have to play that game with the controller. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. It's it's brutal if you don't. Yeah. It's like playing Ninja Gaiden with in a keyboard or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well well there you have it too, folks. If if you had doubts about their roots in the eight bit community <laughs> big fans of Ninja Gaiden, so they've got it right. Now Another game that you also liken this to, and quite frankly, how can you not? The original Castlevania. Oh man, I love that game. I love it. Now, uh, you're talking to one of the bigger Castlevania fans out there. Mm -hmm. I, I I love Castlevania. Just almost almost all of them. <laughs> I, I will tell you that there are plenty that I despise. Ah, there, yeah. there are also there, there, there are always some Castlevania that we hated and didn't like. After all, there's a lot of them. Yeah, nothing can be a hundred percent perfect, right? But yeah, I guess what's important is that you're going more towards the adventure route of Castlevania. I, I, I like to say the forgotten Castlevania, because everyone always thinks that the Metroidvanias you have to have RPG mechanics. You have um, to have a castle, but you're going back to the original Castlevania, where you almost have like levels, and you, you fight yeah. a boss, and then you you move on from there. Uh, this game it's a mix of the old Castlevania style with something from some stuff from the the modern Castlevania. Uh, did, did you ever play Demon's Crest? You know, I did. As a child, I got to the part. Do you remember it vividly? Yeah, yeah almost everything. <laughs> okay, well, there's one part where you get like, angel wings, right? Ah, and, yeah, uh-huh. you have to fly across this giant fire pit 
and as a kid, mm-hmm. I just didn't understand how it was supposed to work. So I, oh. I, I never was able to get past that part, and then years later, I, I glided by it, and I just realized, <laughs> oh, my, oh my god, I did it. I, I'm in uncharted territory now. Yeah. <laughs> So it's uh, it's get the basis of Demon's Quest because Demon's Quest has stages, but it also had um, some kind of uh, like uh, I'm getting new equipment, new stuff, so I can explore new things in stages. Uh, we try to get this those ideas, but maintain it uh, as a, a stage ba- based game. right here I just just picked up the bracelet so you've got you have Symphony of the Night mechanics going on right now you, you pick up different items yeah. so you can do different things revisit areas which is great but mm-hmm. I know you had said it a little bit before but help me try to understand it a little bit better you you're trying to make it old school Castlevania but you're gonna try and mix in like an open world type of castle like, how is it gonna work exactly well, um, it's not an open world game, but um, it's like you have a world map. In this world map, you have lots of uh, stages. Uh, at the beginning, you cannot uh, select the stage that you want to play. You just have to do things like a normal um, action game. Like uh, it's pretty linear, but the stage will be uh, will had one or more roots, something like that. When you... Um, it's like in Mega Man X that you get an, an item and you go back to a stage that you already beaten and try to find more items, more roots, more stuff. So it's something like that. A mix of Mega Man X, Castlevania... Right, oh man. Because <laughs> that was the one thing. I, after you get something, a whole stage might be able to open up within another stage. I was just curious yeah. if you were able to go back, for sure. You, you, if you have beaten a stage, you can always go back to that stage and explore and try to find more stuff. So why don't we get into the story a little bit? So what's the purpose of Odalis? What's the premise? Yeah, set the stage for us. Um, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, there's this guy Hex. Um, he was a um, former mercenary uh, who lived in peace. Like uh, I don't want to fight anymore. I get a family, family and stuff. And then he goes to hunt. When he gets back to his village, it's completely destroyed, and every everyone he knew was dead. So he seeks the one who did that and uh, wants to revenge. Hmm. So it's uh, basically his in a quest for revenge. Ah, yeah, I see. Telltale, <laughs> Telltale story. Anybody, anybody can get that right. Yeah, well, it's like um, he's like a dark hero or something like that. So we're trying to just get revenge from this guy and we're going through all these different planes of existence. What's up with... What are we doing exactly? What world are we navigating? Uh, he, in fact, he's in, in his land. However, there's... Uh, as far as you progress in game, we'll find strange creatures. So, uh, the Haggis will realize that something is wrong with his land. Uh, there's a lot of demons and stuff like that. So um, there's something very wrong happening in this land. So you have to figure out what is happening. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, like in stage, the first stage, you you will not see de- the demons. You will see only knights and something like that, but in the latest days like that, we'll see a lot of demons, monsters, and that guy over there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's exciting to see this stuff. It means that there's going to be a challenge present. Yeah, um, 
It will be a lot of uh, challenges and huge bosses. All right, so what's your favorite part about this game so far, as far as development's concerned? Uh, I really like to the this um, medieval theme, like uh, draw monsters, draw trees, draw nature stuff. Because in Yoniken, we I was always drawn mach uh, machines, cyberpunk stuff. So okay, uh, I I don't. I don't want to draw it anymore. I, uh, uh, I want to try something new. So I, I really, I really enjoy the this atmosphere. Now you're working with three other people, right? Yeah, uh, Thais, who is uh, she's responsible for all our campaign, and she will design some levels. She, she's our level designer. And Marco, who is our uh, coder. However, uh, he was wasn't able to work on Odalus yet. He he has a lot of stuff, lot of other stuff to do. So at now, I'm currently doing the art and coding Odalus. So it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, especially for a three-man crew. The game yeah. looks fantastic, the music is absolutely superb, and why don't we talk a little bit about the gameplay. Now, what are we seeing here on the left and right sides? Oh, those are um, the menus for the game, uh, the uh, user interface. For, uh, it's, when I, uh, I started to design Odalus, I didn't want to make it um, widescreen look like uh, it must have a widescreen resolution but I don't want to make the play area to look like a widescreen so in order to you don't have to pause the game to see uh, all stuff that you got I put, uh, we put the menus on the sides of the screen so it's remain almost like um, uh, an Known widescreen resolution game, but it is widescreen. It's funny. I think that having the the interface on the left and right sides actually appeals more to people who have enjoyed those 8-bit style games. It just feels yeah. right. Um, uh, and it's great because uh, one of the things that I really wanted don't want it to do is okay I'm playing this okay I'm gonna pause the game switch equi equipment and unpause again oh I must pause the game to see what I've got so I don't want to interrupt the action so we put everything on the screen you don't have to pause the game to do anything now I see level and armors and such how are you going if you're not gonna have any kind of pause interface or equipment screen how are you going to put this stuff up, or will it just automatically level, almost like in Metroid, where you get another suit? It's all. It's uh, it's we uh, get Metroid as an example because in Metroid, when you get an item, you don't have to change it anymore. Just right. if you want it, like um, I want to deactivate various suits, so I pause and go there and deactivate. But there, there is not a. Uh, you, you don't have to do that. In Odalus, it's the same thing. I put the in options in Start Menu, uh, the option that you can deactivate armors and change the sword. However, you don't have to do that. When you get a better equipment, you automatically, uh, automatically change to that, so you don't have to do that. Just uh, in case, um, okay, I will beat the uh, last boss of the game using the worst armor and the worst sword, and I will record that. So you go there and change back to the to basic equipment. It seems really interesting. <laughs> more <laughs> oh, and more, more and more that I find out about this game, I get excited. You got your backpack, all the different keys and things that open up. All right, okay. So without revealing too much, because we're you're giving us a taste. We've got relics. We can double jump. Obviously, in a game like this, 
that's requisite material. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got credits, everything. So, how long do you think this game is going to be? I, I know I hate this question too, but a lot of people, they sort of like to know how long they're going to be able to sink their teeth into this adventure. And if there's going to be a reason to go back and play again. Well, um, this game, like, the, there are some people that claim that took uh, thir uh, 30 minutes to finish the demo. Uh, the demo stage is a short stage. Um, some, uh, the real stage are going to be a little bigger. So there will be 80 stages and a final stage. So it will be a pr pretty long game for a, an 8-bit game. Do we have any kind of replayability? Is it just, are you really trying to go for the old school Nintendo approach where it's just so much fun that you can play through it again? Are you going oh, to do the new game plus? Um, I don't going to do the new game plus, however, I'm while I'm working the main quest, I already put some stuff to do, like a, a hardcore mode. What are we so, going to do in the hardcore mode? Uh, when you finish the game, the hardcore mode will be unlocked and you will face the adventure with a, a higher level of dif difficulty. If you get game over, uh, your save will be deleted. <laughs> uh, you lost all your save uh, data <laughs> from the hardcore mode. And there will be an armor that will be only unlocked on the hardcore mode. On the normal mode, that armor will not be there. <laughs> so, uh, if you're brave enough to face the game again harder, I, I suggest to to try the hardcore mode when it was ready. This guy takes a, a ton of hits. Yeah, um, the the only hits that uh, really work in him is the in in the weak point, the the girl who come off of his mouth. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the monster design is phenomenal. While it it's noticeably demon esque, it's just it's so original. I enjoy fighting monsters that aren't just what I'm expecting to fight, like oh, a giant vampire bat or <laughs> uh, just something similar. The Castlevania yeah, uh, titles got it right later on on the DS. Uh, I'm trying to really uh, put some uh, nasty things on this game because a lot of uh, dark atmospheric games aren't really the, the enemies aren't really nasty enough. Like, oh, what is what's that? Oh, that, that guy is ugly. So uh, I've tried to really make an 8-bit game that really look uh, something dark and something twisted. So I got a lot of influence from the, the designer from Alien. Alien movies. Now that's pretty interesting. Which Alien movie is your favorite? The first one. <laughs> As a kid, <laughs> I enjoyed the second one because there was a ton more aliens. Just so I got yeah. to, instead of just a handful. And there is a lot of cool guns and robots. Uh, there, there's a mecha in the, the, the second film. It's awesome. Just playing through this whole demo again, it just it gets me every single time. I love, I just love how it's pieced together. You said in your Indiegogo campaign, you wanted people to sort of get an idea of multiple stages. So the level that I actually just played, this one right here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually exist in the game, but it's just no, a, a no. mishmash of things to, to give people a taste, right? Yeah, uh, this level is um, like, um, you, you can see there there's a water section in this level, there's a ice section, so and a forest section. Uh, it is called the dark forest, however, it's not the, the dark forest, there's a lot of stuff there. Well, it's pretty exciting. What are you guys going to be working on here in the immediate future? What's what's next on your list, I guess? You've got a ton on your plate, I know. But I'm curious. What, what are you working on right now? Ah, uh, on Modalos, you say to put uh, what I'm 
what we are working on Nodalus right now. Right, yeah, what aspects are you focusing on right now in your, in your development? Well, um, right now uh, we are making the hub, the, the, the word map, uh, uh, the word map function. And we started to put everything together, like uh, the real, the real stage one is being developed, and this stage right there, the dark forest, is being uh, rearranged. So there's a lot of things running right now. Oh goodness! <laughs> ah, and. We put the rest of the relics because in demo there there were three relics, right? right. The final game has five, so we uh, put the rest of them. Can't wait to see what they are. Oh man, these stupid skeletons! You have to have them no matter what, though. There's no way around that. Yeah, you have to beat them, so you has you have a little time to. Get it out! Get it out of there! <laughs> All right. So, looking at the Indiegogo campaign, you had a bunch of stretch goals. Uh, you met one. The music is that going to come bundled with the game? How are you guys going to handle that? Well, um, the music will uh, will be. Uh, it's not will be like in Yonikin that uh, when you buy it, you the soundtrack. So, depending of. Uh, the perk that you purchase on Indiegogo, you have the music, the soundtrack, there are a lot of other stuff, an extra material. Uh, for the final game, we uh, we still didn't um, talk about how it will be delivered for the player, but we, we're still uh, discussing about it. Are you going to be, even though you didn't reach all the stretch goals, are you going to try and implement any of those in the game? Um, yeah, uh, as far as it's possible, we'll try. Like, uh, for instance, the hardcore mode will will be not uh, on, uh, will be available on the final game. But it's because we I did a lot of research and I find a way to put this in easy on the game. However, I don't. Uh, we still have to to see how things will be going to guarantee that more stuff will be in the game. Right. Yeah. You want to make sure development and the main stuff is good first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we we are going to uh, try to get more stuff for the game. All right. So what? <laughs> I don't want to ask any specifics here because I want people to be surprised when the game actually comes out. But mm, what else? How was how was the whole campaign process for you guys? Was it pretty stressful? Was it relatively easy? Uh, um, it was very stressful for Thais, who made the entire campaign all by herself. <laughs> she. She had a lot of work to do because uh, in, when she was doing the campaign, I was finishing stuff for the the demo, and uh, she was always like, "Oh my god, oh my god, I don't have enough time. Oh, oh shit, oh, oh that's that's <laughs> weird." So, so it was really fun to. It's fun for me, but it was re re really stressful for her. I can't imagine what it would be like, especially with just a three-man studio trying to do yeah. PR for everything. It just seems like a nightmare. It, um, right now she's on, she's in India, so most most um, most of the stuff are I have to do now because she cannot um, give me support. So it's oh man, I I, I don't uh, I barely can. Um, CD emails, so there's a lot of things that I have to do yet. Oh god, these things are just... <laughs> they're brutal! Yeah. I always seem to get wasted right there. Well, when, when can we expect 
to see this game come out? Do you have any kind of projected time slot? Um, we don't have any uh, specific date, but I think that um, next year will be available at um, I don't see maybe January, February, uh, June. That's maybe a uh, uh, well, next year, at the first half of the year. It's not too far away. Yeah, uh, I hope we can manage to launch the game into there. I like puzzles of this nature. It's sort of like Mega Man X. It leads you into saying, all yeah. right, you know, you get past here, you need to learn how to move this block. And that's what you did right at the onset of the game. And then they, you, well, you guys utilize that later on. It's smart. It's good game design. There, there are more uh, block-based puzzles that I didn't put in this demo stage. Um, there's, uh, there are some doors that you have to put a block on the, on a, a button in the, in the, on the ground. So the, the door will eventually open with the. Because of the block, it's uh, pushing the bot the button. So something, something stuff like that, or uh, it's more like Soul Reaver puzzles. Do, did you play the Soul Reaver? Soul Reaver is one of my favorite games of all time. Legacy of uh, Kain, I, I love. Yeah. Yeah. Soul Reaver, the original one, is probably my favorite. I did enjoy Soul Reaver too, and uh, Defiance was all right as well. Uh, the story was really mainly what I played it for. Yeah, and uh, there there was a lot of puzzles, uh, block-based puzzles. So I, I tried to incorporate those those stuff on Modalos too. I played Soul Reaver 2 when I was a lot younger, and I remember, yeah, in Soul Reaver 2, there's this part where you're supposed to meet up with Janos Audrin, and it's in his tower. But I, what I didn't know was that you could actually shoot the Light Reaver through a bunch of blocks, and that's how like, these doors would come down. So I remember being oh. stuck there for like an hour and a half, just <laughs> thinking, oh. and, and this was before the, well, this was before high-speed internet, I, I want to say, at least from what I had. I think I was still rocking a 56k connection. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know what it is. Yeah, just, uh, I'm troubleshooting. But those are some of my fondest memories. Oh, um, I get I got stuck um, during a long time in the on Soul River one the that uh, that church like stage. Did you remember the church on Soul River Soul River one? I I do remember that. First, yes. There were there were some block based puzzles there, and uh, 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 you have to ring a bell to open a door. So. <laughs> Oh, that man. was hard. It's funny that you bring that up because we actually did a live stream with uh, Dennis Dyack, who he went indie and he was doing a Kickstarter for one of his games as well. He created the series. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. It, it's it's really funny that you bring that up. <laughs> I'm a big fan of his work, so. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, so I guess to finish up here. This, this has been amazing. I really appreciate any kind of Indiegogo or Kickstarter campaigns that actually show off a little demo of the work. It gets people really excited. And I know for a fact, this game is gonna be a lot of fun to play when it comes out. And I'm, I'm really anticipating it. <laughs> it. It's gonna be some good stuff. Oh, we, we hope so. We, we're working hard for it. <laughs> All right, well, just before we sign off then this is your time to, to plug anything you want to say something to your fans if, is there a place that maybe people can keep in contact with you the forums you guys have a Twitter mm, well um, if you wanted to know more stuff about how Dalos is doing uh, you can always visit our website on the join master homepage and the Twitter too Twitter or Twitter account uh, join measure um, uh, we will try to uh, 
put all the up, uh, currently updates on our website so you can keep track of the development of the game. Ah, this, this beast again. You know what? <laughs> it's, it's a good point. A very good point to sign off on right here. Oh, you know what? Is this guy going to be in the final game? Yeah, he will be on the final game, but he will, he will be harder. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Video, thank you so much for this and for all of your news as far as live streams are concerned, anything else you can tune into Leviathan.com. We also live stream all sorts of indie developers as well as just standard videos here. We take your requests well, upon you actually requesting things. <laughs> thank you so much again. Odalis the Dark Call, see it early next year, right? Right, and thank you, Andrew, for this cool opportunity to show to people how it will be uh, our work from from now on. And sorry for my awful English. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem at all. You've been a, you've been great. We really appreciate it. Okay, thanks, man.